Welcome to Working with Health IT Systems, HIT system planning, acquisition, installation, and training, practices to support, and pitfalls to avoid. This is Lecture B. The objectives for working with health IT systems, HIT system planning, acquisition, installation, and training, practices to support, and pitfalls to avoid are to conduct a basic needs analysis for a given example situation, create a plan for training users in a small office practice, a large community clinic, or a single unit in an ambulatory care setting, identify several potential challenges that may emerge during installation, and generate a strategy to solve. For example, lack of basic computer literacy in staff. Training is the final area of HIT systems implementation process we will examine in this unit. Training is an ongoing activity that may be started in the systems implementation process as early as the planning and analysis phase, where training can be used as a form of information gathering for those who will be tasked to understand the HIT systems options to be pursued. However, for most of the end users in an organization, training usually begins sometime after the new system has been chosen and acquired during the implementation phase, and continuing through the support and evaluation phase. There are some key points to consider as you plan for training. The first is that the timing of the training is very important. You do not want to schedule training on a system long before it will be used since users are unlikely to retain knowledge they cannot readily put into practice. Obviously, you don't want to schedule training after it is needed. As part of your implementation process, set up a practice version of the system that will be used for training. Such a system provides a safe place for users unfamiliar with the system to learn without the fear of messing up real data. You should design your training to meet the needs of users with, the, with different roles within the organization. So, for example, you should not force clerical staff to sit through training on CPOE if they will never use that functionality within an EHR system. Similarly, to improve the efficiency of the training and user satisfaction with the training, work out a strategy to first determine what level of knowledge users already have and tailor the training co to cover only those topics that they need additional training on. Assessing user, individual users' current skill level may also help uncover users who lack basic computing skills that may be an assumed prerequisite for starting training on the new HIT system. Providing remedial basic computer skills training for such users will help them succeed with a new, new system. As you design your training, understand that people prefer to learn in different ways. Some may prefer to learn the big picture of the system and may be fully immersed in all of the systems and all of the features and functions in the system at once, while others may only want to receive training a little at a time, targeting only those functions that they will immediately need in their job. This is known as just-in-time training. The just-in-time training is often much easier to implement as an online, self-paced training option, whereas a classroom-based, instructor-led course tends to be more all-encompassing. Some people prefer, prefer to complete the training at their own pace, while others want to be guided by an instructor. Instruction to a group can be very efficient and cost-effective, however. Smaller group and one-on-one -on -one training may be needed to deliver a focused curriculum, particularly if use of, of a given system will vary greatly depending on a person's role in the organization. Your training should accommodate a variety of work schedules, and training time should be carefully factored into the existing workload of your staff. You may want to include in your project budget funds to cover staff time spent on training outside of the normal working hours. Carefully consider who best to deliver the training. It will of course be an advantage to have someone you know is a champion of the new system develop or lead the training than it would be to have someone who has no enthusiasm for the system or worse yet is hostile to any change. Also carefully consider whether to have someone within the organization or outside the organization deliver the training. Having an internal user deliver training may afford you the opportunity to utilize someone who is well-trusted and well-respected, which will help ease adoption of the new system. Some keys to ensure the success of your training plan include lining up convenient locations and times for the training. 
Part of the convenience equation can include developing online self-paced versions of the training. The training should be focused on the skills that individuals will need to utilize a new system based on their role in the organization. You'll have much greater success if you employ knowledgeable trainers who are flexible in their approach, can competently address questions, and expertly guide users as they pick up new skills. As was mentioned before, training can start early in the system's development process, and it should continue as long as the HIT system is in place. Users will need to have the option to revisit training as they need to brush up on their skills, learn new skills as roles change, and to accommodate new people joining the organization. Building in flexible options such as instructor-led, classroom-based courses, as well as online self-paced options will increase the likelihood of success for your training initiative. Of course, the more options you support, the costlier the options, so all of these things should be carefully considered and planned for in the initial phases of the project. The success of an HIT systems implementation initiative will depend on many things going well. We've highlighted a few of the key processes that you will need to engage in, such as strategic planning, user needs analysis, and training. There are many other areas that will need to be considered, and to help you keep up with all of the things to consider, seek out resources tailored to the particular setting and type of HIT system you will be deploying, such as the docket resource highlighted later for EHR implementation in a doctor's office setting. Some general key success factors that will, be, that will apply to most systems acquisition projects include the readiness of the organization, availability of a champion, perceived usefulness of the system, and organizational teamwork. Are the staff members of the organization ready for the new system? Do they understand what the system can do? Are they prepared to spend the time and effort to investigate the options and choose a system? Are they prepared to devote the time necessary for implementing a new system? This, by the way, is never insignificant and should be carefully planned for. You or your users should expect for work to be more difficult as a new system is implemented and integrated into the organization, since there is often an overlap period as old business processes are phased out and new ones are brought in and everyone struggles to learn. However, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and the more you prepare users to understand exactly what the implementation process will be and convince users of the usefulness of the new system, the more likely you are to have a satisfied workforce. Finally, do you have a champion who's behind the project and committed to its success, and is this champion available to provide needed time to the project? Does your organization demonstrate good teamwork? This is particularly important for smaller organizations, since successful change often occurs more organically from within the ranks rather than from the top down. Making connections with people and ensuring their commitment to the project is more important than the technology and its capabilities. As you embark on a systems acquisition project, ask yourself these questions. If you can't answer them in the affirmative, your project may struggle. We move on to the next objective for this unit, which is to help you create plans for training and implementing users in small office practices or a large community clinic or a single unit in an ambulatory care setting. Of course, as discussed throughout this unit, there is no way that we can actually teach you all that you need to know in one unit of the component of your curriculum. Our goal with the remaining few slides is to, quote, teach you how to fish, end quote, rather than simply giving you a single fish. In keeping with the often heard advice, an old, old Chinese proverb, give a man a fish, you have fed him for today. Teach a man to fish, and you have fed him for a lifetime. To move along with that proverb in mind, we are seeing that as the use of HIT becomes more ubiquitous and the accessibility of knowledge and materials is to drive adoption increase, we are finding more and more helpful materials and tools that are available for us on the web by HIT workers. This open availability will help to stop the continual reinvention of the wheel that we see day in and day out and will enable us to start sharing our knowledge and best practices across distances. Of course, no one should accept carte blanche 
materials that appear on the internet without careful consideration of the source, the quality, the accuracy, and the currency of what is available. However, as highlighted over and over again by the Pew Foundation studies in internet use by the public, the web has become a major source of knowledge acquisition by people from all walks of life. We just need to know ourselves and teach our clients how to judge quality of what we find. The shift in pedagogy being evidenced today also requires that we move away from expecting students to use rote memorization to master content. Instead, we are focusing more now on teaching students how to find the answer, rather than trying to memorize it, along with how to gauge the quality of what they find. In that vein, what we provide in the next three slides is not step-by-step -step instructions of how to plan, acquire, install, and train for EHR implementation in the three contexts mentioned in the objectives, the small office practice, a large community clinic, or a single unit in an ambulatory care setting. Instead, we provide links to toolkits that are very extensive, vetted, and geared toward these three environments for your use and consideration. As you open these links from the next three slides, you will quickly understand why they are not provided directly in the slide decks. As mentioned throughout Component 7, each of the units that make up working with HIT systems could, in and of itself, be an independent three-credit course. Moreover, in our goal to teach you where to find the answers rather than providing reams of material for you to memorize, linking you to toolkits may be a more efficient and effective way to guide you to materials that you may require in your careers as HIT workers. Bookmark these sites and remember them as you progress through your curriculum and move into your career. The first toolkit we direct you to is focused on the HIT systems planning, acquisition, installation, and training for skilled nursing facilities and long-term and or long-term care facilities. Note that the processes covered in the toolkit are similar across all three settings, offices, clinics, and skilled nursing facilities. As we discussed in prior units, oftentimes the processes in healthcare are similar, but the context differs. A skilled nursing facility, or SNF, may care for patients with many common characteristics of a long-term care or LTC facility or nursing home, but the length of stays for an SNF are much shorter. Consider this in the planning process because it will change certain aspects of the process. The regulations change and the focus is usually much more intense in regards to rehabilitation and preparing the patient for discharge. However, Many other aspects between an SNF and an LTC are quite common. Populations are generally older. The provider mix in these sorts of facilities is different. Additional regulations exist in regards to patients' assessments mandated by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Administration. CMS exists, and so on. The takeaway point here is that no one size fits all, but as these toolkits continue to proliferate and increase in accessibility, the wise HIT practitioner learns how to find them, where to find them, and how to determine quality of what is provided. The toolkits that we provide for you in these next few slides are examples that you can call upon as you are faced with the challenges of planning, acquiring, installing, and training in a variety of settings. On this slide, you will find a URL for an HIT system planning, acquisition, installation, and training toolkit for SNFs and LTCs. Developed by Stratus Health, this toolkit was funded by Aging Services of, of Minnesota, Alliance Purchasing, and MHHA Service Corporation for use by nursing homes in Minnesota. As of February 2016, the toolkit was available at the URL listed on the slide. These tools are copyrighted and are provided as examples only. In discussing the unique aspects of a provider practice environment or a small clinic, we provide links to two toolkits that can be used as templates for the entire process of system planning, acquisition, installation, and training in small provider practices or small clinics. The first URL, Docket, is a toolkit in the public domain, meaning that it is not copyrighted and you can freely use the material with attribution. As you will see later in this unit, we provide an example of an abbreviated user needs requirement process, audio recording, or prod podcast. We used the material in this workbook to guide that example. The docket workbook, 
workbook is a tremendous resource and contains many checklists, examples, and diagrams that are extremely beneficial to guide the system planning, acquisition, installation, and training process in the real world. These materials are in the public domain, su supported by federal funding, and will increase your efficiency by saving you from reinventing the wheel or trying to figure out how to do this from scratch. This does not mean that you may not have to modify the process somewhat to, fin to fit the nuances of region regional, local, or cultural differences, but it does provide a touchstone to guide your work. The second toolkit was developed by Stratus Health and is copyrighted but fully accessible on the web. As of February 2016, the toolkit was available at the URLs listed on the slide. These are provided as examples only. Finally, the last toolkit that we direct you to examine is one that is focused on clinics and safety net hospitals. Note that some mention is made of clinic assessments in the prior slide regarding small provider practices, which some analysts may cluster with or consider with small provider practices. Therefore, if you're focused specifically on a clinic, you may need to assess the size and scope of the clinic and view both this URL and the one provided on the prior slide, both from Stratus Health. A small clinic that has only three providers may have needs that more closely resemble a small provider practice, in contrast to a large urban clinic that contains multi-specialties and treats large numbers of patients per day. A final point in regards to clinics is to emphasize that clinics and ambulatory care settings are one of the most rapidly transforming aspects of our healthcare system in the United States. Recall from prior units the discussion of emerging sites of care where clinics are popping up in workplaces, strip malls, and retail clinics. Recall that the provider mix is changing, and many clinics are using what is sometimes referred to as physician extenders, or nurse practitioners, physician assistants, or clinical nurse specialists, particularly in remote or low resource areas. The takeaway point here is that, that as you help clients to plan for, acquire, install, and train, that you must be very attuned to not only the current and real users that exist at the sharp end, meaning the frontline users who end up actually having to use what is implemented, but also the way that our healthcare system is changing. An important lesson that, you, that is that you should not be planning for today. As Wayne Gretzky, the famous ice hockey player, has revealed, his greatness came from an uncanny ability to skate where the puck was going to be. The whole process of planning, acquiring, installing, and training requires that you have an eye on the future, plan for where healthcare is going to be, not where it is right now. As of February 2016, the toolkit was available at the URL displayed on the slide. These tools are copyrighted and are provided as examples only. This concludes HIT system planning, acquisition, installation, and training, practices to support and pitfalls to avoid. In summary, we have covered the core concepts of HIT systems planning, acquisition, installation, and training. We looked in some detail how to strategically plan for the implementation, conduct user needs analysis, and prepare for training. We demonstrated how to implement these strategies using some specific healthcare settings and the EHR system as an example, taking advantage of resources available online to help guide our work. Finally, we covered some of the key success factors to an HIT systems implementation and highlighted how failure to address these factors could challenge the implementation.